Hello, I'm Kelly Battles, and today I will be conducting a workshop on how composition instructors can apply the newest advances in cognitive learning theory in a practical way in their classrooms. I'll be reviewing the work of cognitive scientists Henry L. Rodiger and Mark A. McDaniel, among others, regarding the retention of learning and then explaining how their theories can be implemented by college composition instructors. There are three primary objectives for this workshop. First, you will learn how to identify current cognitive psychology theories in the area of learning retention. Then, you will be able to apply those theories to the composition classroom. Finally, you will be able to articulate the relationship between the learning theories and teaching practice. We can learn a lot from cognitive learning theory about how to do a better job in the composition classroom. In the following presentation, I alternate between describing some of the latest conclusions made by cognitive psychologists about the best methods to help students gain and retain knowledge and practical suggestions for how to implement those ideas when teaching composition at the college level, although many of these conclusions would also apply to the high school level. The first important principle to understand is called the illusion of mastery. Research has shown that learners have an enormous capacity for self-deception when it comes to judging the quality of their own knowledge and skills. It takes practice and experience to gain the self-awareness to counteract this illusion of mastery. In the composition classroom, this may take the form of a fluency illusion in which writers overestimate the quality of their own writing. However, it is not always effective for the instructor to be the one who corrects this illusion of mastery. Students quickly become overwhelmed with all of that red ink and they tune out. Instructors themselves may be the victims of another perceptual illusion, that of the curse of knowledge, which makes it difficult for them to bridge the gap between their own mastery of a subject to reach their students where they need to be reached. Apply these principles to your grading of essays by getting rid of all that red ink. Filling in too many of the right answers by overcorrecting papers does not allow students to engage in effortful learning to gain mastery. The composition pedagogy expert Richard Haswell introduced the concept of minimal marking, advocating against the tendency for instructors to mark up every single student error. Research also shows that students often do not even read lengthy feedback from instructors on essays. Not only does overcorrecting frustrate students, it also frustrates instructors. I have found in my own experience that if I limit my comments to pointing out no more than three major areas of weakness, students are better able to focus on improving those areas, and they approach the revision process in a much more positive manner. As I've already mentioned, encouraging effortful learning in students is an effective learning tool. Rodiger and McDaniel have shown that effortful learning, which they also call desirable difficulties, sticks more firmly than a learning process that is too easy. Specifically, one technique of effortful learning that they call generation is a helpful notion to apply to the composition classroom. Generation occurs when an instructor requires the student to come up with the answer to a problem rather than giving it to them. The idea of generation as a form of effortful learning dovetails nicely with Haswell's description of how minimal marking can enhance student learning of grammar in particular. Haswell suggests using a system of check marks in the margins of essays indicating that a grammar error is present without identifying exactly where or what the error is, then requiring students to self-correct. Haswell says that students can generally correct between 60 and 70 percent of their errors themselves, and the effort required to generate these answers on their own ensures that the learning will be lasting and more effective.
Another important way to implement learning theory is to embrace a consistent practice of peer review for assignments large and small. I cannot overemphasize the importance of peer review. It serves several valuable functions. Having students peer review each other's writing is a way for them to self-correct their perceptions by comparing themselves to others and by receiving direct feedback from other students, thus eliminating both the perceptual illusion of their own fluency and the curse of knowledge problem that makes it sometimes difficult for teachers to convey the same information on the student's functioning level. And, of course, it is a form of generation, creating an opportunity for effortful learning. However, peer review must be supervised by a teacher or writing coach for maximum effectiveness. As the researcher Anders Ericsson notes, people seeking expertise in a field typically must perform their practice in tandem with a mentor or coach. As already stated, students are generally not good at judging the quality of their own work due to the illusion of fluency. Research and composition pedagogy confirms the importance of supervision of peer review by a mentor or instructor. For my own classes, I often schedule separate 50-minute meeting times outside of class for each group of students to come together for peer review that I oversee with minimal commentary from me other than prompting students to speak to each other and engage in a substantive dialogue. The next important principle in cognitive learning theory is that students can achieve cumulative knowledge through placing it into a larger context, self-reflection, and identifying key principles or patterns. Composition pedagogy research has shown that self-reflection in the form of self-assessment compared against external criteria is especially effective in promoting the type of reflection that leads to the development of independent thinking. This consolidation of knowledge can occur in the composition classroom via written self-reflections in which students clearly articulate their experience composing and revising their writing and come to conclusions about their own writing process. This type of self-reflection can occur after individual assignments, but it is also often practiced through a portfolio method in which students gather together all of their writing done over the course of a full semester or unit of time and write a self-reflection about their portfolio of work as a whole. I have found that students often struggle initially with self-reflection, but given the chance to analyze example student self-reflections and after practice, over time the quality and specificity of their self-reflections improve enormously. Composition pedagogy research has shown that self-assessment compared against external criteria such as a rubric is especially effective in promoting the type of reflection that leads to the development of independent thinking. I share my grading rubrics with students ahead of time and ask them to structure their self-reflections based on the grading criteria in my rubrics. Cognitive learning theories not only address successful acquisition of composition skills, though. They are also effective for the acquisition of knowledge in the form of facts. For more effective retention, such instruction should involve pauses between teaching sessions. Spacing works because it helps the brain consolidate knowledge into long-term memory. The theory is that the effort required to make up for the forgetting that occurs between practices helps consolidation. We can apply the principles of spacing out and interleaving material to our instruction in MLA documentation. MLA documentation is one of the driest subjects to teach in the composition classroom. However, it is absolutely key for our students to learn it. Their instructors in future classes will expect them to know how to use it without any additional instruction. One important thing is to make sure we don't segregate our MLA instruction to one or two days on the syllabus. 
Instead, space out the instruction over time, and most importantly, return to it through frequent low-stakes quizzing. The partial forgetting and subsequent greater effort required to retrieve the information produces the type of effortful learning that Rodiger and McDaniel consider to be the most effective at ensuring long-term knowledge retention. In this workshop, we have discussed some of the latest theories from cognitive psychologists about how to gain and retain knowledge. And we've learned some practical tips on how to apply those theories to the composition classroom. Some of the suggestions for implementation include minimal marking of essays by the instructor, peer review, the writing of self-reflections, and spaced out quizzing to teach MLA citation style. We've also discussed some of the reasons why these techniques work. Through effective implementation, these theories can be translated from the research lab to the classroom, helping our students to become successful, lifelong learners.